welcome back to my channel if you're new here this is like the perfect vlog for you to start off on so i think today what we're going to do is a facetime type of get ready with me but q a so i think it's a little bit bound time for you guys to kind of learn a little couple things about me um i know a lot of people were asking like hey can you share more about your background like um what you do for work and all that so i figured a basic q a while we get ready with me for the day would be really good so hopefully i keep this under like 20 minutes but we'll start off so hi guys my name is mary um mary nguyen um i am 25 years old i am located in montreal canada i was actually born and raised here um so if it hasn't given it away yet um my family name is nguyen so um i'm vietnamese um both sides of the family vietnamese um fun fact i've been told my entire life i'm 100 vietnamese however um my sister and i i have a sister her name's julia you've probably seen her in a couple of vlogs if you are you've been watching my vlogs um but my sister and i are kind of skeptical so we kind of want to do a um, dna test at the end of the year we'll see how that one goes but that would be really interesting to see if there's anything else in there um so about my i literally have like your questions listed out here my background i mean background could mean so many things but i'm gonna assume you mean like how i grew up and like how i ended up here per se so both sides of my family my dad and my mom were refugees like from the vietnam war my mom and my dad came here like when they were like 17 ish um and basically i was born here However, my parents are separated, so um, from a very young age, actually, um, me being at a very young age, and I ended up being raised mainly by my grandparents. So my mom lived with my grandparents and my aunt, and they practically raised me as a group. <laughs> um, they also raised my sister. So let's say we're the byproduct of like, a group of people <laughs> raising us, which I'm very grateful for. Um, another fun fact about me is I am the eldest daughter of the family. So I am the eldest sister, but I am also the eldest girl cousins among everyone. So if you know, you know, you know, like eldest daughters out there, you know what I'm talking about. So those were kind of like the vibes growing up and also, if you're from an immigrant family, you know how it is when you're growing up. That means you're the first ones here. You need to get an education for us. All of our sacrifices, yada, yada, yada. So you guys can imagine how that went, which means um, I was pushed to become a doctor, a lawyer, or what's the other thing? An accountant? Is it those three usually? Um but as you can see i am not either of those things um i will say that my mom did try to push me to become a doctor i had like when i was in high school when i was in cjep like i had the like i could have honestly but the thing is i don't have that interest in becoming a doctor i never did um and there are certain things like Prior to CJEP, like, everything clicked in my head and, like, I was pretty good at school. However, like, once you get to CJEP, like, you get those classes, like, in bio and, like, what's it, what's it called? Bio and physics and all that. And that's when I realized it did not click in my head at all. Um, to all of you guys that have gone through that program, props to you. Um, it doesn't make sense in my brain. Like, it doesn't make sense at all. So, I did try. I tried to tough it out and give it a shot as my mom was trying to convince me to give it a shot, basically as if, you know, me telling her it just didn't fit in my brain enough. But I gave it a shot for a semester, didn't like it, um, ended up sw swapping programs, went to commerce, 
excelled in commerce. Uh, I'm really good with people. I'm really good with numbers. I'm really good with business. So, turned out I was acing it over there. So I ended up swapping and my mother kind of had to cave because I did, I mean, I did give it a shot. I, I, I tried staying in science. It, it was just not for me. Um, so definitely there was an attempt, but that's not what I did. Um, fast forward, got to, um, got to uni and I decided to do a bachelor's in commerce. In what specifically? So this is probably not as popular, I guess, but I went to John Molson School of Business, GMSB, and the program that they call, they called it BTM, so Business Technology Management. How can I explain this to people that have no idea what that means? Is It's a combination. You're the middle person between people in tech and people in business. So you're the person that kind of sits down the big boss and the software engineers and you're like i kind of understand both i have a base of both so you can kind of co coordinate um but that base of knowledge also gives opens you door to roles either more technical or even more general like project management and stuff like that um so while i was doing that okay i'm not going to try to curl my lashes this far away i'm going to use this um Okay. Okay, there you go. Um, so while I was in uni, um, I don't know if other schools have this. They probably do, but they probably call it something different. But I did this thing called co-op. And um, so that meant for me, I know it's not like this everywhere because I was telling my UK coworkers and they were baffled. But it's basically you do a full semester, which is like four months, full-time studies like full course load then you do four months an internship where you you go to a company they pay you and they kind of like show you the ropes so i did that for my entire undergrad so usually that's a program of like three years but with the like internships in between and all that it extends it to like around four years and i was also doing a lot of like um involvement at that time but through the internships so internships, I chose to do all of mine at a big four. Yeah, I was one of those people. I, I did it at a big four. I'm trying to dry this so it doesn't stick at the on my cheek. But I, I went to a big four. What did I do at a big four with a business technology management? Degree, you ask? Um, so for the first two internships, I did audit. I did IT auditing. Then I hated it and realized I need more people interaction. I don't want to be dealing with machines all the time and like systems and like audits. People actually hate auditors. I've come to realize like they were not the nicest when you go to speak to them as an auditor. So like, I didn't like that either. Um, so... I switched to consulting, which I actually enjoyed quite a lot. Like, I like the aspect of you're here to solve a problem. They have a problem. You're coming in with an outside perspective as well and doing the analysis, trying to figure out what is actually wrong, proposing recommendations and fixing the problem for them. It felt very rewarding and I enjoyed it. However, whatever you've heard about Big Four culture, it is accurate. Big Four do have like they sell you the name basically but the hours the work and all that that's true that's all true um they're not lying to you honey like if you are able to go work somewhere else do it if you're able to tough it out fine but it comes with its this does comes with its risks um so um i did big four i want to say in total of oh my god i just shoved this accidentally in here okay so i did big four for three and a half years and i stayed in consulting oh god this is gonna be complicated um i stayed in consulting but i ended up leaving because i basically hit a wall so after three and a half years and when i say like 
oh god, this is not gonna work well. I basically burnt out. Um, this is probably not the easiest way to kind of explain this while I'm trying to do my eyeliner, but... Give me a break, guys. Okay. Yeah, so I had a medical burnout from work. Um, it was documented at work and all of that, and I took time off. The leave was in total nine months. And it was a very humbling experience. You know, when you're straight out of school and you get flagged for burnout, even though, like, honestly, like, it was bound to come because, like, I was doing back-to-back -back internships. And back then as well, like, they kept me part-time at the firm when I went back to school for the last, I think the last year, like after I finished my internship, I didn't just leave fully. Like they kept me on as part-time. So I made sure I stacked all my classes in two days during the, the week. And then the three other days I was going to, to work at the firm. So your girl hit a wall, got burnt out. And it really put things into perspective. Like prior to that, I was like, yes, I'm going to be a hard worker. I'm going to climb the corporate ladder and all that. And once that hits you, like you realize it is not worth it. Your health is not worth it. You having to put your life on hold for nine months or I've heard worse, like people that were on hold for like a year, two years because of a work burnout like that is terrifying. It is not worth it. Um, so once I got better, I came back. And once I was good enough, I started looking for jobs elsewhere because like even though you went on a burnout and you know you took care of yourself and you come back the place didn't change the people don't change the culture doesn't change so i came back and clearly nothing changed so i i was starting to look for another job i found another job and that's kind of what i'm doing right now i know a lot of people <laughs> for a while were asking me mary did you like just quit your job and you're doing just like content creation i was like no um i i'm still working <laughs> so I now work not at a big four anymore. I am kind of like, I switched to industry. So I work for a tech company now and I am so, so happy. I get treated so well. Um, my, I love my boss. I love my colleagues. Um, when you need help, you get help. That's really nice. And yeah, like overall, 10 on 10, I work from home. And I work at a global company. So like the work hours, like there's always someone online at all times throughout the day because different time zones. But that means I have a bit more flexibility. So if I need to get on a call at like 7 a.m., I, I, I don't do earlier than 7, but like 7 a.m., then that's fine because I finish earlier. And if it's later, then I start early. Anyway, there's a lot of flexibility. Um, there's a lot of understanding. There's a lot of perks. They treat you very well. Mental health is very like focus there um so I really enjoy that and I do YouTube on the side as well so my typical day really looks like these days like I do my work so depending on what day I uh, what time I started I'll finish um earlier or on time like I sometimes I'll finish either between three to five depending on what time I start that day and then I usually will go to make food and then like also edit the vlogs for the week so if you guys were wondering why I've been kind of struggling to be consistent, it's because I'm juggling a full-time job at the same time. Um, it's kind of hard to try to figure that out. But like when I started making content a year ago, like I, I, I bought my camera in September last year and decided to make content. I didn't think it would amount to much. Like I was making it for my friends to like watch and stuff like that. And honestly, for me, it was like the memories and all that. After going on burnout, you kind of, you know, you you reprioritize yourself. And I was like, I need a creative side of things if I'm going to stay in this job field um, like this. Just because while I was studying, I forgot to mention, I also had a minor in marketing and that gave me a creative outlet, like to see things creatively. And I don't have that anymore since I graduated. So it's kind of like, uh like, I wish I had a more creative side to my job, but, like, it's it's more technical problem solving and all that, which is nice, but I don't have any creative outlet. So I 
the reason why I started it, especially after my burnout, is I needed hobbies. I needed a creative outlet that would fuel me rather than drain me. My therapist actually said something like, find ways to re-energize yourself because in a day you have so many cups of energy to give and when you run out, you're out. So find stuff to do that fuels you. So that's basically like, that was my, my solution is, I'll, I'm gonna start learning how to do YouTube. I'm gonna start videotaping my life, my travels. It was honestly the traveling that was also motivating me. I wanted to capture my travels in Japan and, and Korea to have them forever, basically. So I learned all that and then it started taking off and with the move recently, like it's slowly growing. So this is something I wanna keep doing. It brings me joy. It brings a balance to my my work, my nine to five life, and it's fun. That's literally it. I love doing it. I love videotaping. I love capturing stuff. I love editing. I like learning on like learning new edits and stuff. So yeah, no. Um, if anyone's wondering, like I started this out of pure. I want to have some fun. I want to do this as a hobby. Like, I do have other hobbies, like, especially with the medical leave, it really forced me to, like, sit down and make time for my hobbies. So, like, I started getting back into reading. I'm on book 43 this year, out of my goal of 52 books this year. Um, I started crocheting. I'm on my second sweater, and I want to do a beanie next, because there's a tutorial that just came out for that. And then, you know, like... I love cooking, I love hosting. The new place is really giving me like a place to like, look at that kitchen, like to host and cook f for my friends. Yeah, okay. So yeah, no, I think that's pretty much it. This is my everyday natural makeup look. Like, um, yeah, this is all I do. Very more glowy than matte. I feel like it gives you like that youthful glow. Maybe it's the Korea, Asia influence, but that is it. But I think that's pretty much like in general, all the questions I had. Um, if there's something else that you guys would like to know, please comment down below. I'm also transitioning out of the, the moving vlogs because you know, there is an end to moving. <laughs> And I'm going to transition to something more stable. I was thinking maybe a week in my life or a productive day in my life. Stuff like that. Let me know what you guys want to see more. Um, I'm honestly so baffled that we're already at like three, 360 subscriber. Um, I didn't think people would be that interested to see uh, the content I've created. But it feels really good. I really, really appreciate it. And yeah, so... Let me know what you guys want to see next. But yeah, excited to see your comments. And I hope you guys enjoy the video. So like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you guys next week. Because yes, even with a full-time job, I'm going to try to push out one vlog per week. I'm still figuring out what day of the week to make everything make sense in the schedule. But I'm trying. So let me know. Okay. Talk to you guys soon. Bye.